Yes. And uh, we have seen that it was the passenger flight that uh, uh, many um, degrees of freedom of the virtual metric uh, described by standardizations and violent scaling can be traded by introducing ghosts that we see as uh, B and C ghosts. Uh, and uh, at three levels, there was a speciality that of a relation was conform a killing group. This factor um, um, the kind of the passing integral which we could uh, trade by uh, fixing three vertex operator positions. And I mean, which means essentially that we use to conform a um, killing group on the sphere, uh, which is described as three real, uh, three complex parameters to, to fix, uh, I mean, to take this freedom to fix three vertex operator positions, which was like, essentially a rewriting uh, in terms of. Uh, um, parameters with conformal group versus this vertex operator position, so we have to compute this Jacobian. And, and the last uh, minute yesterday, I told you that when we go on the disk, uh, I mean, so we consider open string scattering, um, then all open string vertex operators are inserted at the boundary of the disk, like the upper half plane, they were all inserted here, and then there is an issue that. Uh, again, we can fix three vertex operator positions, like uh, we can fix uh, one v zero and another one at the third one at three, and this fourth one at infinite, and the second one and, and all others are free. However, this fixing, uh, we are aligning the positions along this real line. Uh, um, when we look carefully, we cannot find a general PSL2R transformation which which inter which interchanges these two methods operators. So we because we so we have we have lost some some freedom in these methods operators, um, which is which is described by, by this um, exchange of, of two methods operators. So let's just make an example to see how this works in practice. So we. We set up, uh, we set up the four-pointed open string amplitude to see how, how, how we can do this in practice. So we can compute a four-open string amplitude. So this is, um, and now I'm still writing this is conform the killing group factor, which we now have to, have to deal with. Um, so we, that means we still have all four integrations of, of the vertex operator position. And as I said, uh, along, along the real line uh, of the complex um, upper half plane. And then we have this correlator of fields. Uh, so we, we have generically, I mean, this might be <coughs> any fields of our um, underlying um, open, open string theories, or for example, it might be clones. Or, the bottom extreme cations or any massive string states. <coughs> and now, according to uh, what we have learned, we can trade this uh, factor by fixing three vertex operator positions and, <coughs> and um, take the take our um, take the Seagulls correlator. So we can do what I have written here. We can fix x1 to 0, x3 to 1, and x4 to infinite. And then, of course, x2 is free, and, and that is integrated from, from minus infinite to plus infinite. So that means uh, the x2 um, goes. Um, Let's, let's make a picture. So we have um, x1 is here, and x1 equals to 0, x3. There's an infinite, so the x2 is, uh, uh, can, be, can be either here, or here, or here, or here, which, uh, which um, I mean, we have a compact uh, boundary, which we have, what we have seen um, when we Describes this by the disk. Uh, I mean, that it was by the disk. So the, the boundary where the open strings are inserted is compact. Uh, so that means we have to identify minus infinite and plus infinite here. So then we better uh, 
All right, it's like that. Uh, so we can have the following situation now. So we have fixed, uh, when we have fixed once and forever, this uh, three vertex operator positions. And then x2 might be, for example, here. So it might be run from here to here. So this is just this picture here, but um, as I said, we need to compactify it. And then the x2, so we get three cases. And the x2 might be here, and then x1 is here, as, as before. Yes. So this is a case that we, we here we really have to integrate this integral for x2 between 0 and 1, and here we integrate from minus infinity to 0. And then here we, this is the last case, where x2 is bigger than 1. So this, and you can now see what, what kind of orderings we get here. I mean, we, here we get, we get one, two, uh, we get, uh, depending, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether in which, I mean, we have only two to fix it once. So we, here we, we, we go this way, we get the order one, three, four, two. You know, this is just how this vertex operators are aligned with this boundary. Here we get one, two, three, four. <coughs> and, and here we get one, three, two, four. And now you see beside the, uh, the point what I what was trying to make before that uh, I mean we have uh, we have basically uh, six uh, different um, Different uh, cyclic orderings, and so we have ha only half of them found so far. So there's there's three more combinations missing. In this comes precisely because we made this uh, we made this uh, special fixing here, which sticks to a certain subgroup of the cyclic uh, orderings. So we have now uh, just uh, exchange one and three, and then we get the remaining six. So we don't have, of course, uh, we don't go need four factorial of this orderings, we only need uh, three factorial because it, I mean then we get I mean this is just a matter of uh, where we started to to, uh, to describe it so I could also write this rather than one two three four I could only write it two three four one and so it's just a matter of convention. So now we so this was the first case now the promiosis we need now to input a second fixing, <coughs> which is not, I mean, this, which is not related via TSL to R transformation to this fixing, so we cannot um, transform these two cases into each other. <coughs> and by that fixing, you get now the remaining orderings. Or calling this this gives one four two three. Oh, it's clearly something different what we got from here. Okay. So this is again now uh, we integrate uh, two from zero to. Uh, to, to minus infinite, so this is <coughs> and then here we get uh, here, we have to the so this, this is one, four. Two. So you see, I always uh, start with one, right? Because I mean, it doesn't matter from where I start, but I, I, this is just my convention because I always want this so-called economical ordering. 
And then I have my notations of the remaining three, which have six, six contributions. And this continues to hold if I now would, uh, would for example, uh, consider five point amplitude. For five point amplitude, I also have to just flip two of the vertex operators, which I fixed. It doesn't matter which one, so I could, could have also choose, um, flipped uh, the first and the fourth one. So, for this five point case, I with one, fi one fixing, I would, I would only, I mean, I have it. In total, I have 24 orderings for the five point case. There's one ordering now, according, I mean, in line of this, I would only find 12 orderings, and then by flipping, I would find the other 12 orderings, setting up to 24. So that means, quite generically, we can, uh, we can, for the four point amplitude, I mean, if now we have to sum up all this integration, reach, um, integration regions. Um, because here, I mean, here the integration is is for minus infinity plus infinity for all vertex operation positions. And after this fixing, so we, we have now split the integral into, into these three pieces. So we have to add them up, and we get the final answer for the for the four point open superstring amplitude. So it is a sum over, over all permutations of C4 comma permutations divided by, by the C4 symmetry. So this, this donation, um, this 2 pi with this index means that we, the permutation here acts on this index in this manipulation. So I mean this this, this is six dimensional. So it's um, four minus one factorial. So we have this is also called we have six equivalent cyclic orderings, which which are also shown here. So um, we can, if if all these um, states are the same, uh, then it's actually very easy to compute uh, the amplitude because then we can just, for example, uh, stick to one ordering like like this one, and then uh, get the remaining uh, amplitudes by just um, interchanging the all labels. So, so this is then uh, this amplitude is then just obtained from. Um, from um, um, replacing all two labels with three and all three labels with four and four labels with three. Uh, so that, and let me then write this amplitude for this specific case. Uh, so in, for this particular ordering, um, what's it called the canonical ordering is then given according to the formula. So we integrate x2 from, from zero to one. <laughs> And now uh, we have to redo what we did yesterday. I mean, uh, how to create this uh, conformal killing group factor. That was, um, we have learned that we trade it by fixing three positions, which we did already here, and introducing uh, this uh, Seagull's correlator, which is the difference of, of the fixed data operator positions. So this was the difference x1 minus x3 and so on. And then we have. Computers correlate. <coughs> it's a positions. So this is the generic setup of of um, computing a four point open string amplitude, and uh, it um, it is easily generalized to the endpoint case. I mean, essentially, you have ten more in the n vertex operator positions. And uh, of course, you have more circular orderings here. Uh, the structure is, is always the same. So the, the Z4 acts just uh, rotating this, the, the disk, basically. Mm -hmm. It's like 
changing the starting point. So yeah, this be, yeah, this changing the starting point. So yes. in the n particle case would be S n over Z n. Yes, I, I'm, I'm writing it down actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just uh, the simple symmetry. I mean, going uh, going around the side. So. Yeah. Uh, you have um, <coughs> n minus uh, <coughs> n minus one um, rotations. <coughs> So in the case of n open strings, then the formula looks like. So this is already a quite generic structure for the open string case. So and then we have rather than four, now we have rather than six. So we have n minus one factorial superior to one n. So in the order is. And as I said, if all states uh, are the same, uh, like for example, we have n gluons, then we can actually one amplitude like 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 in the book. Case, one is enough to compute the, the remaining n minus one factorial minus one of twenty five per using indices. So this is the generic structure of open string amplitudes that uh, you know and you also can also see that um, open strings, uh, massless open strings and superstring theory describe um, clones. So when you take the field theory limit, then you of course obtain or you, you preserve the structure, and this is what we now also from PCD that when you compute amplitudes in PCD, uh, they always decompose uh, with respect to this um, color orderings. And so, this is so to say a nice proof from coming from string theory that uh, there is a structure which, which I think is not so, uh, which, which you have to um, otherwise derive in PCD. But in fact, what we what one uh, one part of um, one um, task uh, will be now in the following that actually we will see that there will be less much less orderings necessarily to be com computed. Actually, we can boil down this to n minus three factorial, and and this is will then lead us to to the so-called um, Karasko Johans and the J relations. Are there any questions to this now? If you have not the jumping on factors, you will factorize on the amplitude. Yeah, this is I will come to jump out on factors later today. So um, this um, here you still I don't have yet specified so the inside is so inside your bracket so the in, inside and this there's still in inside this amplitude. So I mean just to um, to um, for you I mean uh, later I will introduce I will subdivide this amplitude into um, uh, some happen factor um, and then um, I mean the group trace for using a better sub amplitude, which is the which is the so called um, um, color color strip amplitude. So we have really only a real number here. But this will actually come in a moment, or um, one hour or so. So, uh, further questions? Um, now, um, I've now given you so far all the ingredients to compute uh, um, a bosonic um, string amplitudes. I mean, that means without fermions. And uh, I will include fermions later, if time permits. But what we what we can do with such a disk amplitudes, I mean, also from the point what I have shown you yesterday, I mean, we have, can also compute mixed amplitudes involving both open and closed strings. So uh, a generic setup would be that we have a deep brainer 
and, and we have uh, open strings like two ones on the deep brain, and they, they can scatter like we did here. So they can scatter on on this uh, disk, and so this is a um, stereographic um, a disk you obtain with stereographic projection on this half sphere, and uh, there may be some some closed strings coupling from the so-called byte. So we might have some closed strings here, and we have open strings. And relying on the, on the deep brain. Now this is a typical setup we can compute now with with uh, with, with the method I shown you. I mean, especially this would be especially interesting for um, if there's a um, moduli fields like open string moduli and closed string moduli, or you can just also have here graviton with and page fields. And and then I want to, for example. Also to show you um, probably on Thursday how to compute such a mixed amplitude. So that means how to really work out such such integrals for mixed amplitudes. So and and of course and the main thing is now to work out this uh, correlator. I mean, and then eventually to do the integral. And for that we need uh, CFT tools. So the first, um, now we do some, uh, uh, we go to some special, um, special uh, cases where, where this can be treated. So we consider <coughs> a string work where, where vertex operators can be expressed in terms of free fields. So I will just in a moment I'll tell you what this means. Huh? So uh, that means we, uh, we, we have so these are unconforming fields. The vertex operators are built out of, of several conforming fields, uh, which we assume that there are three fields. Uh, uh, for three fields, it's enough to know the two-point functions. The higher, but the point is now for this free field uh, description, for the higher point amplitude can be obtained by weak contraction, plugging this correlator and uh, reducing to two point functions, products of two point functions. So, um, higher correlation functions. So what what a um, string work of is um, which can be expressed in terms of three fields. So uh, certainly the, the flat the flat um, target space. Which, you, uh, in, I mean, which is the starting point in the quantized string theory. Sorry. Mm -hmm. In the case in which we're not uh, so the, the x fields interact, etc., the so the curve out, whatever, the, the b and c goals would still be free? Or uh, can you repeat the question? In, the, in a general case, not, not this case, in which instead mm -hmm. there is no free field description for the. For the, for the fields, the bosonic fields, for instance, would the B and C goals still have a free action instead or not? Or yeah, it doesn't, um, this doesn't affect the B and C goals. Still. Okay. So, it's, um, it's so the counting of zero mods would be the same. Exactly. 
Um, I mean, the counting of serial module affects the bright sheet on the, the bright sheet on the same. I mean, the Riemann Roch theory. So, uh, this the field description can be, for example, applied for strings in Minkowski space in the critical dimension. So, that is what we learned. Um, uh, and that is where you quantize the string when you start a new string theory in the critical dimension. But uh, you can also use it, uh, or you have other free field description where you have, uh, when you compactify the spaces and what can be torus or orbital compactifications. So for, for this, uh, you can explicitly write down what your vertex operators are. And, uh, and the third point is, you can only do it for large radius color VR compactifications. So these are large radius color VR compactifications. The color VR is, I mean, the internal manifold is, and this is the size is, is, is big. So that will provide the color VR. <coughs> But uh, I, I want to stress here that you can also compute uh, do such computations uh, if uh, if some of this, uh, especially for example, last point is not met uh, for for a specific specific subsector of your fields, uh, like for example for the uh, for those fields which do not involve these compactifications, like um, for example the the, the two vertex operator. Um, doesn't doesn't it depend on the internal compactification manifold. It, it only has has um, space time value on fields, uh, <coughs> which does this use, uh, so it's a few reactive operator. So for them, you can do this um, this computation we have just done before or set up, and you can do for any uh, for any compactification. I mean, it doesn't necessarily be large radius. So, and then uh, we have, according to this rule, uh, we have uh, we've only to now the basic two point functions, because then all other higher point functions, uh, I should better say correlation functions, because we have the correlator and then the, uh, the, the amplitude is a, a function. So, we, we only need the basic two point functions. On the disk, so you have, for example, you see for here in the two and that operator because the space time fields. So. Yeah, so I think that this correlator you should have seen all the confounded fields here because. And uh, when we have fermions, and especially on this, um, when we have all the this into AX, no? but first of all, we have a problem. This holds on the disk, so I, mean, I could write all this, this D2 or uh, H plus here. Because on this field, uh, there would, would look slightly different. So this is scalar product between the A and the chase of the external momenta.
So now we can, can do um, process information and what I said before on about um, specific ordering, we can do now a computer, um, let's say the first, um, first non trivial example of a string amplitude, then we compute a protachnon amplitude. Then um, this is the amplitude where we can already apply all everything what we have learned so far. So I have actually this is, uh, the examples or the example uh, the part one the uh, examples part two then would be about um, or will be about uh, for example three and four blue amplitudes I mean involving in the super string and the, for that I need to talk about super dose system which I will I will do um, depending on how much time we have so I will not do it really clear because I want to move on to some uh, newer subject. Uh, um, right after these examples. So we, we want to compute a four tachyon amplitude. This tachyon is the open string theory. So the vertex operator is just the external moment of the tachyon times uh, this uh, um, space time field. So this depends on, on C or X. And um, we now use a quantization that K squared is one of our top line minus 1 m squared and and according to what we did before so we have four four um, tachyons or all four the same um, particles or states so, so as I said we only need to compute one amplitude is uh, referring to canonical in ordering so we can just look at the notes so we will just rewrite what I I've written before just replacing the phi field in the correlator with the T in order to talk to So and now um, this is um, already refers to to the fixing X1 that we did before. So the only thing what we need to know now is uh, this correlator and according to our, to our dictionary or to our um, booklet here, um, so that means this is only this object we need to, to use. Uh, so let's just insert it so we get uh, an integral here. Comes Now we just have to put things together and get the final answer and perform the integral and then get the final answer for, the, for this particular color ordering or this particular ordering of graphics operators. For that, it's convenient to interview this quantity SHA. Um, although now it's a pretty market in my answer. So clearly, we, have, uh, um, we need we also define this to be S S one two to be T and S one four to be U, and this is just convention. Now we can uh, 
the, the task is now that we want to express this color product here in terms of this SI chaser. So this is um, so this exponents two, two times alpha prime k a times k j is now according to this rule minus alpha prime s a j minus alpha prime k a squared this rule squared. However, this guys, this is a the tachyon. This has a tachyon um, uh, momenta of all four. So we know that this is. Um, this is one over alpha prime for each tachyon, so we, we get the minus two from here. So this is and now we can add up these three guys and see what what we get. Huh? So we we have this uh, now. Um, this is just uh, the squared. Um, Sum of all the momenta, which is minus, minus 4 over alpha prime. And by this, we can now write. Um, well, first of all, this factor here now. Okay, let's let's write it out. Call this factor xi minus xj. So it's x1, 2 to the 2 alpha prime uh, k1, k2, which from here we can read off as, as, as minus alpha, alpha s minus 2. And then we have x1, 3, which now we have 1, 3, which is uh, t. So we get uh, x2, 3. And now we see, now you might worry that uh, there's a problem because x4 is, is, um, is sent to infinite according to our fixing. But uh, this, uh, this relation helps us to just get rid of the infinity uh, because, um, um, because so this factor, all, all of them imply a uh, factor of, of um, x4, so this will be something like x infinite, which I write like that, um, to the minus alpha prime s plus t plus u. Minus six. So now we know that this is um, minus four over alpha prime. So this is, means that it is four. Now we have four, four minus six, which is minus two. And this precisely cancels the other two infinite from from this factor here. So this, if if this would have not cancelled now, it would have made something wrong. So this infinity is have to cancel. And um, so we are left over with x13. So we can write this integral finally. As an integral from 0 to 1 dx. And then this three guys. This is the guy we, we, uh, we insert our fixing, so we get, for example, um, the x2 we have to put to x, I mean, this parameter, so this we get. So, I mean, the x13 is, is just 1 or well, minus 1. Or and then this can be computed um, 
Und in that case, this okay, can even convert as mathematical. Uh, this gives uh, this is gives um, the Euler Beta function. Um, this is also the famous Venetiano amplitude. So now you see, all right, I mean, at this example that uh, you, you obtain non-trivial functions in string theory when you compute already three-level amplitudes, non-trivially depending on, on alpha prime and this uh, so-called kinematic invariance, STU. And uh, so the only step is now that we, we have, this is now this one particular uh, ordering, um, <coughs> local canonical ordering, so we will have now to Permute indices to get some other orders. Permuting indices in this formula means so we have thing called S is S is um, one two. So it's S one two. So that means when you want, for example, um, the amplitude one three two, we have to exchange two and three. So when, for example, the, the one just stays but the becomes a three, and then we can go back to our dictionary and that means we get a T here and so on. So this is one amplitude example. Are there questions to this? Sorry, just just to be sure, you are <coughs> just not writing down the anthropomorphic part that they are on there, right? Because you get modular. No, no, we don't have. Uh, this is we are we are always uh, now for, we have to pure open strings now, so we we are just along. The yeah, boundary. they're on the boundary. Yes, but before when you well, were writing down the correlators, I had mixed. Uh, I have uh, open and closed. So then, of course, we also have both holomorphic and anthropomorphic. Okay. Parts. And those boundary conditions are not. Yeah. The boundary conditions are are um, normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Further questions. Good, then uh, we are done this what I want to do. So now we want to, uh, before going to the second set of examples in the super string, uh, we want to now learn more um, from the Valchin properties of the string amplitudes. So we, um, to some extent, in this uh, Valchin integrals and see what we can extract from this uh, from their properties. The um, second part for the second lecture. General properties from the string version. So, um, what we will consider now, I mean, let me just uh, um, repeat or review what, what um, we have learned before. 
to set up the notations. So we, we have seen that um, in any fine amplitude and involving only open strings, so we are integrating a lot along the uh, real axis. Is an integral over any static operator position before before fixing and then this correlator. Involving any fields, right? And uh, there might be massless or mass field field. So then fulfill this each of the states fulfill this mass shell condition with some uh, level n. And we have see, seen that um, from the geometry of the boundary, I mean, for the disk, which was a circle, I mean, the compactified circle, uh, there's a natural order in vertex operator positions, which, uh, which lead us uh, to uh, conclude that we can always get a sum over this um, n minus 1 factorial decompositions. This guy is here, and are uh, the so called half of sub amplitudes. And uh, I don't know if you, you might have learned in the stream, of course, that uh, when you have open strings, then I have charged, I mean, you can attach, attach uh, charges to the um, ends, uh, which is typically a compatible factor. So you have So then also this this uh, matrix is uh, will, will change the positions. So and for the rest of my lectures, uh, we will always um, refer to the so-called color strip amplitude. So we will don't need this uh, color factor here, but uh, this is for convenience that you know that you can. This factor here is, is really um, trivial when you have just the one for an H group, but uh, you can also have um, some of the sum of two planes. So, to this end, the generic structure of this color strip amplitude uh, can be written as follows. 
And this is for any amplitude, even for the, for the uh, superseding amplitude we will uh, discuss in more detail later. So this amplitude now uh, can always be written in the following way. So this is enough for, for, for the remaining discussion for today. I will explain the limitation in a moment. So this is the sum over kinematic factors times our, uh, our um, conformal Turing group um, volume times. So now we have just, uh, so it's essentially what I have written before, but. Um, So any any open string amplitude, both massless or mass simple, always takes this form. So this so this is a product um, from the um, from, from, from this conformal Turing structure to this um, integral measure over. Form. And uh, so, uh, first of all, the, the, this is the integration, and of course, this d, d pi is, is the integration region now, which, which has to respect this ordering. So, in the case of canonical ordering, this is just the integral where, where um, c1 is smaller than c2 up to um, cn. So, this is the case pi is the identity, and then, of course, the other just follow from the notation. So, this is just the Integration region, I mean, which refers to the ordering here. Then, um, this is the so called Kopernese factor. We have this already seen uh, for the, let's say, uh, for Dachner amplitude. This comes from um, Recalled before when I wrote down these basic correlators for from Tango from the conformity theories, I wrote down the, um, the correlator for n exponentials. This is precisely for um, from this function which we had already uh, for the four functional amplitude. So this simply the I mean each vertex operator has this has uh, needs, needs to have this plane wave uh, which describes the propagation in spi space time. So when we have n vertex operators, we get always a Correlator of this n exponentials, which is which gives rise to this Kovalevsky uh, factor, and, and actually this is a, uh, to some extent uh, this is a, where the non-trivial information comes from, uh, and also the field theory amplifications um, come from, from especially from this object. Yeah. And then there's an additional factor which comes from uh, just taking into account uh, um, any other other um, Correlators, which which uh, give um, rise to some to some um, integer powers in this um, in this um, difference. So, um, as an example, so vertex operator. We, we have first we have seen that we have just the simplest vertex operator, which was the Bachmann. So for the Bachmann, you only need this. You only will get this Kubernetes factor. But when you, for example, have, have a dual vertex operator, then this comes to object I have written down before. So in, and then that it has this um, Champagne factor, it has, a, it has a polarization. This is a dual vertex operator, which I, I, I guess you, you have seen in uh, So as I said before, it has this plane wave um, exponential and has other fields, free fields. And then you can imagine you have an endpoint correlation function, so you have n of these objects. Now we have learned that in the four field theory we have to reduce it to divide it up um, this correlator in, 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 in the product by big conjunction, the product of the endpoint correlation function. So you, for example, might get something like uh, um, like um, 
also dx von äh, Wuffer und von äh, Bracket ist dx von the second clone. And then we go to our dictionary, we have seen before this correlator is 1 over c1 minus c2 squared and so on. And this is one piece in the full in the full uh, for the full correlators which which can't be used to this is integer power as well. So can you explain the integer power here? So we then write some continuous proof to the NIJ. And we get uh, now if you think excuse me one actually we also have to take into account this size which has a polarization of the gluons. This is for the first gluon V1 and V2. So we have seen that actually this gives the ground error for this E to achieve from our dictionary, so we get a conjunction of, of these two polarizations. So this is psi 1, psi 2, collateral rupture. And this is precisely what I, I denote by this, by this um, collectively by this factor here. This describes all kinematical factors. So this is a, this is a situation of polynomial. Um, So kinematics so, for gluon is that it applies to cos x, the whole does have an external momentum of chi a, and then we get the end polarization. For the Bach gluons with first colors, we have only external momentum, but then for, for, for gluons, for example, we have, we have a vector polarization here, and we have other things like canvas and canvas gluons. So this is, but the generic structure is always the same. We have this Kinematical factor, and then we have these integers and this overlapsing factor. So, this we can, we can now study in more detail because from this, many, many nice relations follow. Are there questions so far? Should, should we make a break now or should we just continue? Let's do a break. And then five minutes. Okay. So now uh, we would like to uh, consider the sub amplitudes. I mean, uh, so far we, we need to consider n minus one factorial sub amplitudes, and now we will see how we can reduce this number by so called numerical relations. So we will find that there is a minimal basis of sub amplitudes, which is necessary to specify the full open string amplitude. And this has, has um, far reaching consequences for the complexity of the amplitudes. Can you speak a bit louder? Can you speak a bit louder? Yeah. So let's, uh, to, to exemplify, let's consider this for the four, four point case. So uh, again, I mean, this part of sub amplitude for the for the canonical color ordering configuration, I mean, according to this formula, I mean, it's a sum of all the kinematical factors, and then we have this conformal um, factor, and then this integral of um, four positions, and then we have to respect this ordering according to the sub amplitude under consideration. And now I do something which will be clear. Um, in a moment, um, I I divide up this product into uh, differences uh, which don't include the first position, I mean the C1, and um, the rest. Uh, so this is involves involves really up to four, and then we have um, C four one, C three one, and C two one to the two alpha prime K one K four. Um, So here I, I simply drop the, the absolute um, uh, 
they do it because um, I mean four is clearly bigger than one, so then uh, this is a good number. And uh, then we have this integers, which um, probably we don't split, so, so it doesn't matter how so this is now just, I mean, so far, just a writing of, rewriting of this formula here for the four-point case. So this is, um, can, can be read, I mean, so it's, so that's a little scarlet level, but uh, k1, k4, k3, k1, and um, k2, k1. And uh, now, um, for the, um, for the next discussion, it will be completely sufficient to consider just one particular kinematics. So we take out of the sum just one particular term. So we take just this uh, uh, for, for particular i. So in fact, now we want to, to investigate this integral or this um, this integrand is a is a holomorphic function in, in the position C1. Is it really um, This one. Yeah. Uh, this has a scalar product uh, 2 alpha prime k1, k4, 2 alpha prime k3, k1, and 2 alpha prime k2, k1. I mean, maybe I can. can So here is um, k1, k4. This has power to power to k1, k3, and k1, k3. So we want to consider this now. Um, the integral is a holomorphic function in C1. And actually, we want to. Uh, we want to uh, to see what is going on in the full complex C1 plane. So this is a complex C1 plane. So let's clearly, according to our ordering, um, C2 is smaller than C3 and uh, smaller than C4. <coughs> so if you really want to compute this amplitude here, we should we should, uh, I mean, according to what we have learned, uh, we should integrate C1 uh, from here to here. So in that case, we really get this amplitude under the final configuration. And note that, that uh, this, circle, this line is, um, is a compact uh, circle, so we, we, um, we also integrate back from to here. I mean, this is simply. Uh, the fact that we, when we had a given choice, um, this at zero and this at one, and this at infinite, this is integrated from, from minus infinite to zero, which is of course extended when we identify this n to infinite here. So that means we also get this amplitude from this. <clears throat> so now we want to, as, as this, uh, maybe let's make it. So now we want to um, consider this amplitude in, in the full complex C1 plane. So I recall, I mean, for the what, what, for the for the given uh, amplitude, I mean, we have, we only need to integrate from here to here, and then we get it more and more. But now we want to see what what uh, what we can learn if we extend. Um, or analytically continuate the integral in C1. No? But first thing to, not, to notice is that, so we consider this as a whole, the integral as a holomorphic function in C1, no? but uh, we cannot just uh, then uh, consider this as a holomorphic function because uh, we have all these terms and this, uh, these are real numbers. So we have uh, lots of homotomies. If we if we go would would hit this point, and so if we would simply integrate this function as it is here, uh, and from here to here, I and mean, then this is not well defined because we have this, this monotone from here, so we first have to make this function well defined. So in other words, we have 
this function here as a function in, as holomorphic function in, in Z1. Huh? As branch points, besides that, this points here. So we must now first, in order to make something well defined, to make a well defined integral. So you are fixing two, three, and four, right? Yeah, it doesn't. It uh, it, it is not really. You can say because we have four point one, we have, we have fixed them, but it's not really. Uh, it's not really an issue. It's not really important because uh, the only uh, thing what matters is, of course, that we, we have this ordering. That, that two is smaller than three and so on. No, I mean, if you fix different, that fact would be different. That z four one, z one, two one would be different. Z four one. Because as long as you fix two, three, four, <coughs> that would be two, yeah, three, this, three, this four. This is not the factor. This is not the factor. Uh, I don't quite understand. I mean, uh, now, uh, I, the only thing what I need to know is that, that I have this order in here, which means that uh, when I get this, so. C2 minus C1, which is what I integrate here, is always um, positive. I mean, at this point, you haven't fixed any of the Z, right? Right, I haven't fixed any. Okay. The only thing what I what I uh, assume or must assume is that, that I integrate over along this this um, ordering. I haven't fixed anything, right? And I will not fix it. Uh, in fact, I'm, the whole discussion will be independent on, on how I fix it. The only thing what I have to know is this. this. And because this I have to now, uh, because then I know that uh, this is a this is positive, and that, so to say this is my, my starting point. So, but uh, again, because if I want to to my integrate now, not only from from here to here, but to any other integration, I mean, this is of course not anymore anymore giving this amplitude. It will give us some. Something else, I mean, will give us actually some non trivial relation. And then, of course, I have to make this function as a holomorphic function to be well defined, because otherwise I have all these this branch points. And this is, as you know from, from analysis, is done by, by introducing some phases so, and, and just takes a, um, makes up a, or renders the amplitude well defined. So, yeah. We have in the exam the branch cuts this is back to C1. We, we could do the following so we take this integral. So I mean, uh, I only write those part of the integral which we need now. So we have a DC1 integral and we have also the, the remaining integral and just the remaining factors. So, um, I don't want to write this stuff anymore. <coughs> this is, I just put here. So the only thing what I, what I do want to write is this C4, 1. So we make it well-defined as a function, as an analytic function in the whole complex C1 plane by just putting this absolute uh, value is here. So this is C3, 1. And introducing phases. And the rest is, I mean, the rest, what is from here, I mean, is this point is here. So, what, what, what should, should I choose for the phases? Well, it's, it's quite. Uh, it's quite natural what I, I mean, what I choose for the phase. I mean, the choice of the phase is usually when you have a computation and you have some freedom. But, but now we, we, we want to make, make some contact to, to what we had before. So I just write down what phases I want to choose. And then, and then we, can, uh, we will see that this makes, makes uh, a good sense. So this is multiplied with some phases. And And of course, these phases have to be independent 
on 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 the on the on the on the position of the integration for for a given integration region, which is precisely the case. So although they depend on the C1 and C2, I mean for for a given for a given C1, I mean there are, there are just numbers. So I will tell you what the values are. So the theta two alpha prime C1 two three C1 C C So what we have now clearly accomplished is so this is a fun this is a function theta and what we have now clearly accomplished <coughs> because we wrote this absolute uh, value is that we, we have a we have no branch cuts anymore. So we can really can consider the function in the full complex C1 plane. So in, in this basis, they are defined as follows. Space is doing. I mean, so in the case uh, when C1 is smaller than C2, that means I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere here. <coughs> it's just, I mean, this, this theta is just zero, although this space is just one, so nothing is, is happening. However, when, when I uh, cross the C2, then suddenly um, C1 is bigger than C2, I will pick up this, this S here, so I will pick up this phase of, of here. So I will precisely pick up this, this space which 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 I which I, I got or which I see uh, appears uh, from from uh, from crossing the, the crossing in this complex C1 plane the point C2. And the other phases are similar. I mean when I when I'm crossing this other point. So. So in effect you can you can now so now it's clear what the spaces are doing. So they will give us um, minus signs when minus signs to this uh, to this powers so whenever we cross here this point. So, so that means uh, this is of course a clearly not a nice um, Writing of, of this analytic continuation with this, uh, with this phases, but we can actually uh, accommodate these phases by just uh, uh, by just um, um, considering the, the respective contra integrals. So this is this is now the function. This is now the first. Um, this is now the function uh, which is which is well defined as a full complex C one plane. And now, what we want to do now is we want to, to consider an integral um, in this a counter integral in this uh, complex C one plane, and, and and see uh, what what comes out. Of. So we we want to consider. Let's make a color. So we want to consider this this integral in blue, this counter. Since we have a, an, an integrate uh, this analytic con this analytic uh, um, this under, um, analytic continued function, this this integral. So we want to consider this. Or what this uh, function has to be <coughs> because uh, we have a holomorphic function. And uh, we can see that it doesn't receive any kind of view from infinite. This is actually a factor of field theory. And now we can see what what is this, uh, what is actually this uh, what is this function doing? Actually, it's uh, we can um, replace this we can replace this 
this function by, or we can, uh, so here, when we have learned from this phases, when we go from here to here, that we pick up this phase. So we can actually do it differently. We can say that we replace this um, counter integral by making a circle around this C2. And then we, we, have, we, we obtain this phase, and the same is um, for this point here. So we can accommodate this phase by just doing this counter integral. But now the whole point is that when we integrate C, C1 from here to here, we get a different amplitude. So here, from here to here, we get, because we have a different ordering, so we get here 2, 1, C4. I mean, then we don't touch the other ordering, so, so they could be fixed or they can be just arbitrary. The only point of matters is that they have this ordering. So we, when we cross C1, we, from, when we integrate from here to here, we get this amplitude. While here we get, when we integrate from here to here, we get uh, 2, 3, 1, 4. So now we can write down what we get from doing this integral, which is zero. So let's see what we get. When we start integrating from here to here, we get this amplitude. So we just write it down. When we go from here to here, well, uh, we get this amplitude. So we get 2, 1, 3, 4. But uh, the spaces uh, have told us that we, we have to do this loop here when we, when we go from here to here. So we will pick up a phase, uh, which, is, which is this phase here. So we have here phase 2 pi i out of 9, k 1, k 2, plus. And now uh, we integrate from here to here, but we have to make this loop here, or saying differently from this. Uh, without this loop, I mean, what I wrote from before, I mean, we have, to, we have the spaces from here where we will have a different phase. We have already obtained one phase from, from here, we will of course keep it, so we, will, we, will already, we are already in this branch here. So we can now change the branch to so this uh, combination. So this is then multiplied by this amplitude here. And this is zero by this because now we have to, of course, now we integrate to close the loop, we have also to integrate from here to here, but this gives the amplitude um, for, uh, sorry, uh, 2, 3, 4, 1, uh, which is the same amplitude as here because we uh, these two um, infinites are identified, so we are coming back here already. What is what is crucial here is is that here we get we, we obtain another phase, so, which is so let's see what we get. We would get another phase, um, which is um, k1 times k4. And since we are already in this branch, we have this total phase. So, and of course, we have to stay in the same sheet. So here we have st started in the sheet with, with no phase. So that means this phase has to, has to has to be um, has to be we have to be back in the same sheet. So this has to be one. Huh? And actually, look at uh, by just some uh, by applying momentum conservation for this four point problem, you can see that this factor is one. But this is important. By that now we have obtained a, a, a very non trivial relation between the sub amplitudes. Which, which are called monotony relations. Sorry. How do we know that the, the, the loop doesn't contribute to this? Okay, good question. Um, the loop doesn't contribute for any for any string amplitude uh, because we know that um, we, we know that this object here uh, behaves uh, for any C, let's let's take C L. Uh, uh, goes to infinite, this integral always behaves with Cl to the power 2 minus um, Hl. That's from the That is a uh, fact from conformal field theory, is it? And with, with Hl is the conformal rate of the vertex operator of, of this referring um, to coordinate. So that means, um, and, and I have told you yesterday that, that we have. Uh, 
um, that we need our methods operator have conformal weight one, no? because uh, uh, because we have this differential and in, in the past in general Ireland as well have comp compensated the method operator compensated <coughs> DCL. So, so that means we, we have this power. That means here we have we have um, in, the, in the present case uh, um, this is two power minus two uh, conformal weight of the first method operator. So we are perfectly. Find that we don't get anything from that. And so this actually we can just write um, by momentum conservation. As I mean, this is K one times K two plus K three times K four. And this is not, not yet momentum conservation. But then I apply momentum conservation, and then it is um, minus pi 1 squared. And this is, uh, this is the mass of, of the first, um, that kind of the first center. And this is the integer. I mean, it's um, the second level or whatever, and then you do the model from the closest. Is, is this concept clear? This is a very nice uh, concept, uh, um, relating analysis or complex complex uh, geometry with, with this uh, virtual properties of the strings of, 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 um, string, of string articles. And from this we will get um, now, um, many nice uh, features. So now, uh, this only for um, convenience, I, I only showed you the, um, the four-point case, but now I can, of course, imagine how this parallelizes for endpoints to get relations of this kind, which, as I said, are called multiple relations. So that is the situation which you get Resulted by generalizing this case, which means you start um, moving or first perform analytic computation in, in C1. Now. So you move, you move the integration of C1 along the whole boundary, so you will see the one um, index. And again, of course, the momentum conservation can show that uh, the monotony closes. So you get lots of this equation because now we, so far we have only considered the case of, um, um, I mean, of doing this uh, for the C1 coordinate. Now, but now of course you can do all these uh, games now for any other coordinate like C2 or C3. What you get is you get uh, lots of permutations of these relations, so you get many relations. And now the question is, uh, so we get many of these relations, and uh, the question is now uh, how can we solve I mean, this gives clearly uh, a system of, um, of linear equations, and so how can we solve this system? So of course you can make sure that your system is, uh, implies all kinds of sub amplitudes. So we, I mean, we, a priori, we, I mean, uh, we have uh, 
Um, we have, of course, n factorial subamplitudes by interchanging all those amplitudes, but, but now actually we see that we get a bit more than what I have introduced at the beginning because I told you that uh, we should always uh, put the one at the beginning uh, because, uh, I mean, this is just a matter of convention where we start along this cyclic uh, orderings on, along the, the boundary. So that means this amplitude, I mean, we can just write also as as 1, 3, and 2, and so forth, so in the of this, so, so we can make sure that this is <coughs> only involves our n minus 1 factorial independent, so far independent amplitudes, and the answer to this is that, that actually concerns this um, system of equation, so you can choose a basis of, of n minus 3 factorial those amplitudes uh, uh, which and, and express any other any other amplitudes or any other the, the difference between this number and that number you can express in terms of the spaces. And I want to to, 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 to show you how this works in, 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 in practice, um, now um, at the bottom, massive case. Uh, so, in fact, you can now choose a, a specific basis. Uh, you can, for example, just choose this guy. And, and, and sigma permutations of, of only, of only this, this are n minus 3 indices. Uh, so these are n minus 3, so we permute only these three labels. So sigma is now a permutation of s n minus 3. And this uh, will be now for the rest of, of my lecture, will be the, the, the basis we will always choose for these amplitudes. Any questions at this point? <coughs> so let's make an example now. Again, with a bit of support like place. So as, as this uh, recipe says, now we have to consider all kinds of permutation of these amplitudes. In fact, we have all permutations are actually by far too much, many we usually consider, so we actually need only uh, six, six relations for the four-point case. So we can, for example, write down this relation. It's just a variation of what we have derived. Huh? I mean, well, I mean we just can do labels. <coughs> So this you clearly get this relation by um, doing this game what I showed you by um, performing an elliptical equation and the third coordinate. So you you you, 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 you and you move it from, from into here. So you get uh, one three, and then you pick up this monotony factor, and then you uh, further put it into here, and then you get this monotony factor. And then when you put it here, you are already back to the original amplitude. Um, and you take the imaginary part of this amplitude, the amplitude, um, then so take the imaginary part of this relation, which we call relation number one. Now. You get you get the following equation. You get to consolidate it for for this amplitude. And you get um, sine factors. Thank 
times. Uh, so actually, the goal is now, I mean, for the four point case, um, according to this uh, number, we can actually express in the four point case everything comes of one amplitude, because four minus three is one, that's a factorial of one is one. Yeah. So in fact, it will be now the goal that can express everything in terms of this function. So we have six, uh, for, the <coughs> for at the beginning of the course today, we were thinking that we have six independent sub amplitudes for four point amplitude number. Now we can express everything in terms of this guy. Now we, we can uh, look at the sec second relation. Um, this is this. Again, you can solve, um, take the imaginary part and solve it, and you get one, two, three, <coughs> equal to minus sinus, minus sinus, minus Now you can uh, take um, you can consider certain uh, relation from form two three plus. So this follows now. I, I exchange or I move uh, four to here, so it gives uh, a monotony factor of uh, two times k four. One two four plus, and then I add it further to to here one two three four. You see, actually, here, um, since, since we want to express everything in terms of this one, two, three, four, we, we better should um, set up those equations which already um, involve this um, basis element, and we will, uh, we, will, we will head faster to the, to the, to the final, uh, final agent. And now we um, I uh, will take um, 2 pi i alpha prime and k2, k4 of the circle relation minus 2 pi i k2, k3 plus k3, k4 of the second relation. This is a new relation if I don't write them. And so this gives a new relation star. Um, and you can take the real part of this equation you get. So this gives a new relation star, and then you take the real part of it. So 
So it's been this or um, the last line. Okay, I did write it again. Um, so um, we take yeah. circulation minus It's a real part of it. Um, and the real part we solve again for what is left over. So the real part only implies A1 and A1 and A, A1 for 2 C. And then that, that can be expressed in terms of A1 C2 4. The following way. And one, two, four, two. We have here, for example, already. So we can take this equation and then we have also express this amplitude in terms of only one, two, four, three. And this is actually. Um, Interesting because this factor here is one uh, if we would have identical particles. So this factor is one for identical particles. Or identical string states. I mean this follows simply from uh, when we have four um, we have uh, four particle problems, so we have four string problem. We have momentum conservation, which we can write as follows. And then uh, you can multiply it, and you get uh, 2, 2 k4 k plus um, m1 I mean minus m2 squared minus m4 squared. On the right hand side, you get 2k1k3 minus m1 squared minus m3 squared. So, if all masses are the same, well, this color of the is mass is the same, well, then you get, you get a factor of 1. Then. And then, of course, this is nothing else, but what you might now already is parity. So, you said 1. 1, 4, 2, 3 is 1, 3, 2, 4. This is parity. But you get precisely, for example, if one of the guy would be first massive level, uh, then uh, you, would get a, you would get a minus sign. So you, you replace, uh, um, you replace, uh, so for example, if, if, if the first one would be, would be first massive level, so the first mass would be, um, would be, um, 1 over alpha prime squared. And let's say the other, all others are massless. So then we would, um, we could again re replace this k2, k4, 2 times k2, k4 um, with ten, in terms of this, uh, but we would have an additional bundle. And so the cos cos cosine would. would would get uh, picked up a minus sign, then it would be minus. Actually, this is the case we have in a paper this week. And at that time, only with one massive guy. Um, and, but, but here I'm giving you the formula for, for generic masses, so this formula gives you any state, and, um, which is actually unpopular. So if you consider Kamo-Tayman of this, so uh, you get, uh, I mean, you just do Kamo-Tayman and this label, so you get similar um, cosine relations.
and then we have all five relations um, necessary to express all six amplitudes in terms of, of this one, which is for our basis. And this is for any any mass level, I mean, so Again, we then we need to, to use this relation and we have this. <coughs> so, uh, as we have just seen, as, uh, we get by three uh, the parity relation. <laughs> from this multiple relations. The quality is simply that we have some end fine amplitude. We pick up some minus factors depending whether the states are massive or massless. And of course, if we this is precisely what, what we have uh, seen here in case we take, for example, the fourth one to be uh, massive. So we have uh, and that then we, we get this uh, flip in the minus sign. Are there questions to this? So if you you can take this formula then uh, so as I said if you take all three masses mean mass I and mean, then zero and, and then force one mass equal, then you get a nice subset of equation um, to get that from the relations which For so all amplitudes for this particular case uh, are then expressed in terms of one in this amplitude. And then of course we will be assuming to for example to use um, one or so other relations to express in terms of one plus two. So the S and P and U are defined as the value before the Huffman case. So this is what I showed you. You can generalize for the endpoint case. In fact, um, as I said, uh, all this is 
This particular case is, is published. Well, if you want to want to write a paper, you can write a paper on first of this four point case, how it is generalized, and you just pay whether it's good or the bad for them, and you generalize for the endpoint case. And uh, what is important is that uh, this was completely independent on any on any um, it was didn't depend on the kinematics, so we remember we, we just stick to a certain kinematic uh, kinematic term, it was a script K, and this relation holds for any given kinematic under consideration. So these are quite powerful relations. And uh, they allow us to reduce the, the full set of sub-amplitudes to n minus 3 factorial. And this, um, of course, it, these are string relations which boil or which boil down to, I mean, you can take the alpha prime goes to zero limit and then you get also this relation for, for field theory, which for field theory, this relation, I mean, similar the relation has only been conjectured uh, by Bernd Carrasco in 2008. Uh, and this is a proof how this relation are proven to strength theory. And, and, and in particular, since we haven't talked about any uh, supersymmetry or anything, so those relations are completely independent from supersymmetry and, and, and if they even hold for broken supersymmetry. Um, Yeah, maybe I, I stop here. Well, are there questions? Maybe, maybe, maybe.